to our service on this morning. Look, we got a real, real, real wonderful treat for you today. I'd like to introduce to, my, to you guys my lovely wife, Lady T. She's going to be ministering the Word of God, and I'm telling you, if you have ever heard someone minister the Word of God like her, I tell you, have it. You need to come on into our sanctuary. Come and enjoy us today. We've been talking about love. She's going to come and let us know about love is not a feeling. It's a decision. Come on in and be blessed by the word of the Lord. There's a generation that knows me as a soccer player and another that knows me as a soccer commentator. But my kids, they know me as a soccer dad. So I can't imagine a better experience than AYSO. It's the best place for kids to learn to play soccer and have a great time doing it. It's how I got my start, and it's how my kids are getting theirs. Imagine me, a soccer dad. AYSO, great soccer, soccer starts, starts here. here. The pastor has been teaching on what? Love. And today I want to make it crystal clear to you all that love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. Repeat that. Say, love is not a feeling. Love is, not a feeling. Love is a decision. Love is a decision. It's not a feeling. It's a decision. Because when them feelings have left you, what are you going to decide to do? Amen? And the feelings will leave. Amen? Yes, they will. Hallelujah. Pastor has been teaching us that faith is our foundation. Faith is the foundation of what we believe. The Bible says in Hebrews 6, 11, what does it say? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who is him? God. For he come, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Amen? So we need to diligently seek him so we can have that much needed faith. Amen? And a working definition for faith is simply confidence in God. Right, right. That's all faith is. All right. Confidence in God. That's a working definition. And we all like choices, so let's give you a choice. Trust in God. Right. So faith is confidence in God. Right. Faith is trust in God. And we find it very difficult for some reason to have this faith in God. True. We have faith in our job. When y'all go to work, y'all just know you're going to get a paycheck in two weeks or seven days, correct? Right, right. You have faith in your car, right? Yeah. You don't keep going out there in the middle of the night checking it to see if it's going to start up, see if it's going to take you where you go. So you have faith in that, amen? Right. When y'all sat down in these chairs, you had faith in that chair, didn't you? Yeah. You didn't shake it and wobble it and see, is it, it going to hold me? You just sat on down. So we can have faith in everything but God. That's the main thing that we should be having faith in. So we don't have to be worrying about nothing or trying to figure some things out. God said he already done worked it out while we're trying to figure it out. Amen? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, it says, but it is written. Whenever you read something in the New Testament and it starts off with it is written, it's telling you that it's already written in the Old Testament. Amen? It's just reiterating what has already been said. So when you read your Bible, you see it is written. It's already written in the Old Testament. Amen? So it's already written that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. That love him. Now, do you like God or do you love him? Okay, can you appreciate God or you just tolerate him? They say you want to go where you appreciate it, not where you tolerate it. I don't want you to tolerate me. I want you to appreciate me. Appreciate it, okay? So, Eyes have not seen nor ears heard or has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. What does he prepare? We have no idea. According to the scriptures, it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Your mind can't even comprehend that. Can't even comprehend it. A new heaven and a new earth. So no, we can't figure out what God has prepared for us. We don't even have an idea what 
what it's going to be like. But we excited about it, amen? I know I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready. And Pastor has been going over the three definitions of love. So this is just a little review before I get into my message. And the first definition, he said, was phileo. Phileo love. It means to have adoring affection and feelings for. It's a type of impulsive love. It's the natural love that human beings have affection for each other and affection for a friend, often known as brotherly love, phileo. You know, when you go to the city of Philadelphia, they call it the city of brotherly love. That's where that foundation came from, amen? So that's the kind of love, like, that's my girl, I love her. That kind of love. Oh, man, I love you, man. Let's give her some doubt. <laughs> that's, that's phileo love. Then the next love, the key is down here, we can talk about it's called eros. Eros refers to sexual or erotic love. It's the most associated with romance, that eros love. You know, when you first meet somebody and you're thinking about them all the time, you get butterflies in your stomach, that's that eros love. I call it that newness in a relationship, that honeymoon period, that eros. That eros love gonna get up, okay? So if you don't got no agape love, that Eros love ain't going to last. You know, when I first met Pastor and I see him, my heart used to be, now my heart don't be, but I love him. No, it don't be like that. <laughs> but I love him more now than I did then. So I can't build my love on those feelings that I was having. Amen? The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 33, nevertheless, let us let each other and love each other in a particular way. Uh, for love your own wife and let the wife see and respect her husband. That's that arrow's love. And when I was reading this, I said it's funny that it tells the wife to love her hu husband. I mean, no, it tells the husband to love his wife, but it tells the wife to respect her husband. It's a lesson in that, ladies. It's a lesson in that. So we, it's like we are loving beings. We are emotional beings. Men need to be respected. I mean, it's like they're offended if you disrespect them. If you tell you, I don't love you, they're like, whatever. But if you tell them, if you disrespect them, they hurt. So that's a word right there. Now that's a whole other teaching. We ain't going to go into that today. Stick to the message. Stick to the message. And the next one is agape love. That's what we're all striving for as Christians. That's what God commands us to have, that agape love. This is the kind of love that perhaps expresses Jesus' statement the best. In John 15 and 13, he says, Greater love, agape love, has no man than this that, that one lay down his life for a friend. Jesus himself perfectly exemplified this kind of love throughout his lifetime, offering his life as a sacrifice for humanity and eventually laying down his life. Now, I got to think twice about that. I'm going I'm to die. Oh, wait a minute. But that's the agape love that God wants us to strive for. It's an unconditional love. I don't love you because of anything that you've done to me or anything that you said to me or anything that you've promised me. I love you just because. I love you. So you didn't work to earn this love. It's agape love. It's an unconditional love. That's our goal. That's what we're striving for, agape love. There's no strings attached to it. Just love you because I love you. Love you because I love you. And that's what Lady T is working on. Amen? Amen. Our goal is agape love. You know, somebody say, I love everybody. I'm working on loving everybody. I'm working on it. A work in progress, but we got to be truthful with ourselves before we can help somebody else. So when somebody says, I'm, I'm having a problem, I'm having a problem with it too. You know, because really there's no unlovable people. They just do things that we can't get with. But if we search hard enough and look deep enough and stay there long enough, <laughs> we can find something that we can love about them. Amen? Amen. Love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. Love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. Love is universal. Everybody wants to be loved. 
whether you go to Asia, Africa, Tokyo, Nokio, China, Japan, wherever you go, everybody want to be loved. Love is universal. Universal. And God has no respect of person, so he tells us to love everybody. Love the little children, love the old man on the street, love the bum, love somebody that can do something for you, love somebody that can't do something for you. We're supposed to love everybody. Amen? For some of us, some pe- we will be the only Bible that some people will see. That's it. Because they're not coming to church, they're not reading the Bible. So we have to exemplify that unconditional love, that agape love, so they can see it. For some people, we're going to be the only Jesus that they ever get an opportunity to meet. So if we're ambassadors of Christ, we need to walk like it and talk like it and operate it so they can see something different from the world. If we're doing the same thing the world is doing, what sets us apart? We're supposed to be set apart. That's what sanctified means. Sanctified means set apart. So we're supposed to be set apart from the way that the world does things. Amen? And that sanctification is a process. So once we get saved, we have, boom, sanctified. We got to walk out our salvation. Amen. got to walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Now walk it out. Some, <laughs> some of you will be the only example of love that people will ever have the opportunity to experience. The only example. We have to think about it. So many people have not seen love in their homes, have not experienced love in their relationships. Some people have it so twisted that they think if you treat them wrong, you love them. Right. And if you treat them right, you weak. Yeah. Some wrong, they mind twisted. That's why we got to get in this word and renew our mind and see what God says about it. Amen? Yeah. Because what the, de- what the um, de- dictionary and what the world says about love and what God says about love is two different things. According to the dictionary, love is an intense affection, a warm feeling for another. A strong desire of devotion. That's what the dictionary says. But God says what's in 1 Corinthians 13. That's the definition of love. Now we're going to get to that as as we move right along. Now once you make a decision to love somebody, the feelings will come later on. The feelings will come later on. So love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. We have made a decision to love in spite of everything else. We've decided that we're going to love. And when we think about it, the Bible talks about us loving and making that decision. The word that we use for that is obedience. Obedience is that decision. I decide to be obedient. You know, when we think about submission, when you're submitting, submission is not a bad thing. It's really not. I don't mind submitting to pastor. Because I know he has my best interest at heart. I know that pastor is the head. And y'all know I'm the neck. Pastor is the head. And I don't mind submitting to pastor because I know he has my best interest at heart. And being obedient to what it is that he would have me to do. He's not going to have me do something real stupid. You know what I'm saying? So we, we just need to know that. And then being out, oh, that wasn't always my mindset, you know. So we got to get in this word and, and, and renew your mind. You got to get in that word and renew your mind because you'd be thinking totally different. I remember when I was married to my first husband and um, I was doing the cosmetology and they were planning a trip to New York to a hair show. So I said, I'm going to the hair show. He was like, no, I want you to go to the hair show. I said, why? He said, because I said you ain't going to the hair show. I said, but why? He said, because you're not going to the hair show. I said, okay. So, you know I went to the hair show. <laughs> so, I went to the hair show, and I called when I was in New York, and he was having a fit about it and everything. And then when I got back home, he said, I don't believe you went to the hair show, and I told you not to go. And he was like, you just told me. I'm the husband. And I said, I'm not the wife. And I said, I wanted to go to the hair show. So then, you know, we were talking about it. He said, I just, well, what made, you ju- what, what made you just go? I said, well, what made me go was I thought about it. And I said, okay, if I don't go to the hair show, I'm going to stay home and I'm going to be mad because I didn't go. If I go to the hair show, you're going to be at home and you're going to be mad. If I got a choice in the matter, you're going to be mad. <laughs> I'm going to the hair show. I'm going to the hair show. Amen. Amen. 
So in learning how to be obedient, we have to change the way that we think and understand. Like now, Pastor and I in my second marriage is like, okay, we're going to have agreement. So if we don't have agreement, we not moving. Either way, Pastor come to me, he want to do something, I don't agree, Pastor don't move. I come to Pastor, I want to do something, he don't agree, we don't move. Once we have that agreement, then we make a move. And just know agreement ain't overnight. Sometimes agreement take two, three years. It does, because like my car, Pastor comes up and you need to go get a new car. Now, man, I'm driving a nice car, he's driving a hoopty. <laughs> he's like, you need to, we need to go get a new car. I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling a car note. I'm not feeling that. Satan, I rebuke you. I'm not, I'm not feeling that. So then he was like, well, no, we need to go get a new car. You know, I'm tired of this. I'm this and that and the other. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go to the car lot and find out what is it that I need to bring in so we can get a new car. So I finally agree. Now, man, this is like a year. Was it three years later? So it's like two years later. I'm saying two, one, three. So like two years later, I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna go see. So he, I'm finally like, okay, I'm in agreement, but I'm really not in agreement, but I'm getting to the agreement. Go to the car line, and I'm like, Pastor and I are self-employed. So when you're self-employed, you don't have a check stub, you don't have a W-2 or anything like that. Normally, you have to bring in your tax papers to be able to move forward. So we, I go into the car lot, and Pastor ain't even with me. You know, he had work on the road, and I go in, and I'm talking to the guy, and I was like, well, maybe we'll just get a used car, something that, you know, I haven't had a car note in almost 10 years. I'm not wanting a car note. And he said, you just believe God for it. Whatever you believe God for, he'll provide, blah, 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 blah. So I believe God for it. We finally got our agreement. So when I went to go look at the car, I drove off the car lot with a new car. I went, I mean, like I said, I was just going to find out, okay, what do I need? He didn't need no W-2s, no 1099s, no nothing. He went and looked at my credit report. And remind you, don't worry about having no bad credit because if God wants you to have something, you're going to have it. If God wants you to have something, you're going to have it. Now, man, I walked away from a business. I walked away from a house. That don't look good on your credit. The house was in foreclosure. The business went in foreclosure. I just walked away from it all because God had something better for me on this side. So I was willing to walk away. That season was over. And I was like, that's going to mess up your credit. That's going to do that. That's going to do that. If you were a child of God and he opened up a door, can't nobody shut that door. And if he closed the door, can't nobody open it. Amen? Amen. So the power of agreement is, is, is crucial in a marriage. It's, it's crucial. It's, it's the foundation, that power of an agreement. And not manipulation. Agreement. Amen. Let's turn to John 3 and 16. John 3 and 16. If you look and say, look in. If you're there, say, amen. amen. All right. So let's all read together. John 3, 16. We're going to read all the way to verse 19. Ready, read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but his everlasting life. For God sent his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth on him is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because of their deeds with evil. Amen. So God came into the world to save the world from darkness. And some of us have made a choice that we'd rather live in darkness than walk into the marvelous light. But God so loved the world that he was willing to give his only begotten son. His only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him might have life everlasting. That means for eternity. That means that you will live forever. Now don't get it twisted. If you choose Christ, you will have eternity in heaven. Amen? If you reject Christ, you will have eternity in hell. You got to make that choice while there's breath in your body. You can't get to hell and say, it's hot down here. I want to go to heaven. Too late. Too late. 
The decision making time is over. You missed your window of opportunity. You missed it, you missed it. And then how it all got started, y'all know about Adam. So that was God's original plan. Sometimes you gotta have a plan B, okay? So that's what Jesus came on the scene. So God's original plan was Adam and Eve, and they were gonna live in the Garden of Eden, and life was going to be beautiful, and everybody was going to be blessed, and it was just gonna be wonderful in the Garden of Eden, and we were gonna replenish the earth and subdue it and just have a wonderful time. But that didn't happen. Y'all know Adam and Eve got deceived by Satan. And in the midst of them getting deceived by Satan, then God was like, okay, I'm gonna have another plan. I am going to have my only begotten 